Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this edition of The Example Show, where we are talking with Howard Vale about tips, tricks, and lessons learned for creating a live interview show like this. Uh, a couple of changes this week to the show. I, I'm now going to be scrolling across the bottom at certain points during the show. Some audience questions. So if you happen to be watching, the first audience question is, how many lives do you watch every week so leave a comment and let me know what you how many live shows you watch every week but after that i am now going to send it over to howard to give us an introduction to himself and tell us a little bit about what he does so take it away howard hello ryan first of all thank you for having me on and it's, it's good morning for you but it's good afternoon for me in uh, rather cloudy uk i'm afraid um what do I do? Um, I create videos for uh, businesses, uh, and uh, one of the products is called a Whirly Gig, which is an animated logo that goes in. That's all the sandwiches in between your video content. And what I do, which is quite novel, is I interview local business owners about what they do, why they do, and how they do it. And uh, one of the products, I condense everything into two minutes, so the um, the audience will get the experience and the and um what drives the business so that owners can send them out to prospective clients um and they get to know what they do and and how they do it and uh that's my day job and my other job is like you i host a live show on linkedin called couch interviews live which is great fun and uh, i enjoy doing that yeah right and so a couple of weeks ago you had me on couch interviews live and it's it's a similar show to this one here you bring on a guest and you have a little conversation about whatever it is that the guest wants to talk to so i thought it would be a great idea to have you back on the show to talk about that yeah the... thank you it feels very strange it feels very strange Ryan. so i'm normally on the on the other side of the screen so it's, it's weird <laughs> Yeah, so so one of the things, if, if you're new to the example show and you haven't seen any of these before, I spend or most of my uh, conversations are with people who have created live shows or podcasts or interview shows of some sort in the past. And we talk a little bit about the behind the scenes of what it's like to create those shows and looking for tips and tricks and helpful information for others that may want to create a live show. But that's what we've got there. Uh, I go through five questions that I like to ask everybody that I have on the show. So we're going to dive into those and we're going to, we're going to get your answers to some of these. Also, if, if you happen to be following along and you're an audience, we're talking to Howard Vale about tips for live streaming, but I got another audience question here. Do you drink coffee? Uh, I've discovered this is a topic that people are very very curious and passionate about but i'm gonna throw it over to you howard how many cups of coffee do you drink every week one just one <laughs> just one <laughs> and that's the, that's the only reason that is because i've got um an early morning networking meeting which starts at 7 a.m every thursday so i need a cup of coffee to uh to pet me up so one all right. Well, that's that's pretty simple. That's an easy answer. Usually, people have to add up how many they have every day, and nice. Uh, right. complicated. Well, how many? How many do you have then? I don't drink coffee at all, so I'm zero. Oh, there you go. You see, and one more, and one better than you. I drink yeah. tea, cup one, of tea. One better. There you go. All right. Next question. What's your favorite restaurant? <sighs> well, they're all closed until tomorrow. Um, Actually, it's, it's uh, we have pubs in the UK, so there's um, there's a really good pub restaurant, which is which is really nice to do uh, popular stuff. I like I like I like um, I like my steaks and burgers, so they do really good steaks. So that's what I like. All right. And, uh, there's an, there's another Italian one, which uh, which is also good, and they do really good pasta. So it's called Bella Italia, I think it's called. That's good. That's nice. I like that. Yeah, but, burgers, uh, steaks, and pasta. That it's a collective mix, isn't it? It is. I, that sounds like foods I would like to eat. So yeah, it's 
not exactly in top of the health food chain, but uh, you know, <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, but our restaurants are opening up are opening up tomorrow. By the way, Independence Day, so uh, there we are. Right. So it is it's it's Independence Day in the United States. You're over in the UK. So mm -hmm. is, it still, is it a holiday there? No, it's July the fourth. However, it's, it's it's a special day because all the um, all the restaurants and pubs are reopening tomorrow. I think they did it on purpose, so uh, there will be a lot of celebrating tomorrow because it's all been right. three, months, three months since everything shut down. Right? Yeah. I I just I thought uh, like I knew that Independence Day, July fourth, in the United States, is a special holiday, but. It kind of is a coincidence that your restaurants are. It's a coincidence. Up. I think the government planned it on purpose. That's what I think. Well, that maybe makes sense. It's good for headline writers in the newspapers. It it would be, and it, I guess it's something to celebrate. I I don't want to go too up into too deep into the coronavirus, but the United States opened up, and we've had a lot more cases, and I've started to hear states are considering closing back down again. So. I don't know. We'll follow okay. that. I don't really want to talk about it here. No. So it's it's uh, if I can ask you a question. It's July fourth a public holiday in the United States. Yes, it is. So because it's a weekend, do you do you get Monday off instead, or, or uh, actually today is the day that most people oh. get would get off would be today. Well, Happy Independence Day. Well, well, thank you. <laughs> uh, here in here in the United States, we we celebrate it by. Lighting off fireworks. Yeah, because you got rid of the Brits. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if that's, if that's helpful for us or not, but it's fun. Uh, like it. All right, next question. Uh, we go. Just said restaurant. When you read, are you a paperback book person? Are you an ebook or are you not a reader? I don't read as much. When I do, it's it's an ebook from Audible. All right, you, you like to have someone else read it to you? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm dyslexic, so I don't read that much. I, I can read, but it's um, I need to read things twice. Um, so I, I prefer audio books. Yeah, they're not as good actually as as as, as proper books um, because you know you, you can go back and and leaf through the pages that that you've missed. So ideally, you, you still can't beat a book and and a proper book actually, a physical book. Can't beat that. All right. That makes sense. And last question I ask guests, what career did you want when you were growing up? Or did you always want to be a video creator? Uh, no. Um, I wanted to be an actor. Uh, I always wanted to be that like, because um, how can I explain it? At Christmas time, we have what are called pantomimes. I know you don't have those in the States. I think it's got a different meaning. It's a traditional play based on nursery rhymes. Um, it's all rather weird where um, in the old days, the, the the female character was played by a male. The male lady was played by a female. It's all very odd. But I always had the lead part in our school play, and I wanted to be an actor because I liked being in the limelight. But my parents put me off, <laughs> which is a shame. Hey, you know, everybody doesn't always end up getting the career that that they wanted as a kid i never had aspirations to be an actor but you know that's okay now you get to at least do some live video and talk yeah. about that a uh, couple of comments here frank he does drink coffee he says yes to coffee i don't know if that means he drinks yes i have two coffees but i think it just means he drinks coffee well well done, i don't know frank. frank if you're still listening you should tell us how many cups of coffee you drink every week get That'd the be That'd be fun to know. Anyhow, we're gonna we're gonna move on to the next question. We're gonna get into the the heart of what I really wanted to talk about here. But for those people who happen to be happen to be watching live, I'd love to know when was the first time you watched a live video on the internet? And this ties in nicely with the question I have for you, Howard. Why did you choose to do a live show? Why? Um, I, ne I need to answer that particularly for, for LinkedIn because you and I are, we're quite lucky to get this access to LinkedIn Live. Um, 
I, I, I had to apply for it and, and got accepted, which left me dumbstruck. Um, and I thought, okay, there's a good opportunity here to, to be an early adopter, to, to get my name out of there. And quite honestly, I want to give things back to the business community. I wanted, because part of my role in, in videos is talking to businesses. So I thought I'll, I'll transfer it to live videos where people can come on, business leaders and business owners can talk about their business, you know, what they do and why they do. Uh, it's good PR for them. It's good PR for me. And it's my way of giving back because I've, I'm very fortunate to get this access to LinkedIn Live. So that's that's for LinkedIn in general. But live video is brilliant because um, you don't know you don't know what's going to happen. You can't edit it out and things go wrong. And when you're producing a live video, your eyes are looking all over the place. So it's rough and ready. And I like that. It's natural. Um, and uh, when you get interaction as well, it's, it's immediate as well. You know, you get a lot of interaction. And even if you don't on the live, you 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 actually get a, a bigger audience on the replay. So that's that's why I do lives, you know, and it's fun. I I, I find them fun for a lot of the same reasons. Uh, one of those that people maybe do or don't don't know when you do live, it's it's a little bit nerve wracking every time before you go live. There's just a little bit of nervousness going on. Maybe a little adrenaline kicks in. I don't know. It's, I love it's it. Kind of fun. I, I enjoy that part of it, but everybody maybe does. not Yeah, I, I, I love it because, you know, you are producing a show, actually. And then, you know, there's things in the background, like, you know, you, you've got you got the banners pre-prepared, you've got questions pre-prepared, and um, some, excuse me, sometimes I have video lined up. So I, I run everything through it, and uh, it's great. I love, Yeah, I get nervous, but it's, it's, it's exciting nervous. It's, that's what I love about it. It, it is. It, it's one of those fun things. And also when, when you're live, I, you don't actually know what's going to happen. So that, no. that part of it's kind of fun. I think, I think that's fun as an audience member. It's one of the things I like to watch when I watch lives is I, I feel like you get a better understanding of the people you're actually talking to and visiting with and hearing on the live show, because it's not edited out. You get the ums, you get the ahs. All, all the words you get the real person when it's live yeah absolutely and uh um i give a, 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 probably like you have a pre-show chat because some people are quite nervous about video um it doesn't hurt being videoed so have a chat but me he's telling what to expect and um little tips and uh yeah and 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 off we go um i tell you one thing that that sometimes can happen everybody i speak to being been really gushing because um the only person who can talk about themselves with enthusiasm is you know is is you but sometimes you know they they don't take a breathe to stop a sentence and i'm sitting there like this smiling thing and and i try to get a question in but they're they're off and running <laughs> which yep. is great but you know it makes my job easier people people like to talk and if you can get them onto the topic that they're excited about yeah you're you're good enough yeah okay okay we're, we're gonna jump into to a couple of, next audience question here you ever wanted to be on a podcast or a live interview show I, I there's a lot of people that have thought of creating these so audience question you ever wanted to do that howard i know it's the first time you've ever been at a live interview guest because you were telling me that before the show so that's it, it's different being on that side but as a person who creates a show creates a show can you walk us through the show creation process what does it look like for you what from promoting it to going to going live you mean i the whole thing from finding really? a guest all the way what do you have right, to do I'll, to I'll get find, a show going well, once i find a guest we'll have a chat and um what's What's really strange, because, you know, you, because we know what we, well, you know what you're doing, you know, you naturally think that the person you're going to talk to knows how the whole thing works. So what you think is obvious, you've actually got to um, go um, spoon feed them, which, which you know, I, th I, I first thought I'm being patronising, but it's not. It's actually been very, very helpful. So because they'll say to me, well, what am I going to talk about? And I say, we well, talk about you. You know, this is what we're going to be talking about. So we'll have a bit of a chat. What, you know, depending if it's generic to the uh, 
to their to their um what 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 they do so it was going to be techie so it's 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 it's, it's about them um and then i pre-prepare the uh publicity post and um and it's very similar it's similar form, format to you so i create a post i try and create a a catchy title for it as well so I put the post down with the person i'm talking to a bit of embellishment um and then i do um uh an image with me and that person using my brand colors which you probably guess is orange so i use that as the publicity and then so people so to, to get interest because it doesn't work like facebook i wish it did because facebook you can create you can schedule a live and you can't do it on linkedin which is really I wish they wish I wish they do that. So every every live is technically unannounced. You you, you just go live, yeah. um, although although you can publicize it in in events, which, which I have done, because you can create a, link, a LinkedIn event and that creates a link to the LinkedIn event, which I then put in the publicity post. But the downside with that with LinkedIn events, unless you register, the video doesn't go public. Unlike Facebook, an event is public. But in essence. I do a publicity post and then then um, I just post in my timeline and ask people to comment. And then on the day of the live, uh, they, they, they get a link. And I, I do a pre-talk, you know, go roughly what I'm going to be talking about. I don't pre-prepare questions because they know they know roughly what it's going to be. And then just to get them at ease, um, guide them to uh look at the cameras i'm doing now because if you start looking at the screen you're you're not engaging so make sure I, I, you know because it, it is strange looking at the uh, the camera not, not looking at you um yes and um here's a tip i do have cues to stop people from talking by the way um which may help you with you so what i do when when someone's making a very good point i put them on 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 the solo screen so they've they've got the whole screen and I say to them, if I think we need to move on or, or, or change subject, I'm going to come in with split screen. So there's a hint. I say to them, it doesn't mean you're going to have to stop. It means I'm ready to move on. So I, I give certain cues for, for people, you know, when, I'm, when I think we should move on to a different topic. And then we just have an atta, you know, like, like this, really. Um, I make sure they publicize their business. I make sure they, they, they actually give value because people like giving value. Um, and at the end... You know, I have I have their contact details going across the screen. Although I like your idea of audience questions, I like that. So it's all you know, it's all because it's all promotion for them. So they're giving value, but you know, they're there to promote their business. So, and I asked them at, at the end if they've got any um, any services that that they offer, and um, I flush out their website because you can share a screen, and that's about it, really. You know, it's it's been like this. It's it's free flowing, you know. Yeah, but th there's more there's more to it than just going live because you, you got to you were just talking through it. You got to find your guest. You got to create. Yeah, some, I'm making it easy. Yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah. you got to find. You got to make some promotional posts. You maybe make a, a image or two to promote it. You got to put those out on social media. You got to then you got to come up with what topics you want to talk about. It takes yeah. a little bit of work. It's not. It's not. Overly yeah, I make, I, made, I make light of it, but each day takes time. Finding finding the guest, doing the graphics, thinking of a snazzy title to get people on. You know, to get people hooked, and then a bit of a bio about the person you're talking to. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I mean, those are the stages. But each stage takes time, especially doing the graphics um, and posting on LinkedIn. And and then and then on 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 when 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 we do when we have, we have a pre chat I I pre prepare a bit like I would imagine all all my banners all my videos I'm going to show the questions I make sure that uh, the contact details are correct when I speak to the person I'm talking to I flush it up before I say is this correct um, and but it doesn't end there because even when you're going live you're keeping an eye on the chat I'm keeping an eye on the banners make sure the banners are on screen not too long. And make sure the comments go on the screen. So I'm, you know, you, you're you're looking all over the place as well, like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and, uh, and there it's are, so when you when you go live, there are a number of different things. Yeah, that you have to pay attention to and and look around for. Yeah, but I love yeah. it because you you get that nervous feeling. But it is tiring after. I I have to wind down afterwards though. 
um have to say but it's fun i love it so no you, you don't just click live and that's it um there's there's a lot of preparation before i'm you know yeah all right we're we're diving into the tough questions now what is a live streaming mistake that you have made that you would like to share with us so that other people who are live streaming don't make the same mistake <laughs> oh cheers okay well right. when 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 they go when someone goes live um i try and share it or write, or write a comment and i normally put my guest on the full screen and i forgot i forget to do it so this is what happens i'm, I'm going to go onto linkedin and i'm starting to do this which doesn't look particularly good so that so that's that's a good one or uh because you know the idea of putting, putting you on full screen is that they don't see me messing around <laughs> or i mute my or um i mute myself and forget to unmute that was a good one <laughs> i haven't done the mute one i yeah. i do oftentimes type and look this way while the other person's talking and i could how, how do, here i'm just going to try this how do i make you full screen do i just remove myself no you click on down below you've got the two of us click on my my there's a head icon do you see it i do and if i click solo layout that's it there you go can i still talk alone. welcome to my show yeah i can hear you yeah so you can go off messing around and leave the room and i just well there we go that's it hey see I i've never played around with that i'm i'm no, learning tips and tricks already yeah and I, I forgot to do that it doesn't look very professional but you know what it's live you've got to be real it's not you know yeah you've got to be slick and professional and the person you're talking to is there to promote the you know to promote their their, their business um but you know just keep it real because you know it's got to be engaging people like you know to talk to you like you know frank that was nice yeah, one of, one of the things I learned this week is somebody mentioned they have a live show and all they do is they said, I talk to, I pick out some of my connections from LinkedIn every week and I just do a live for 30 minutes to introduce them to the other people in my network. And I just thought that was a really creative and and simple way to do it. And what you're doing, it sounds kind of similar. You're more focused it's on people with their own businesses to promote their businesses but i just thought for someone who's new out there and wants to consider just live streaming it's maybe a good idea just pick people in your network and interview them and it can be as long as you want 10 minutes 20 minutes 30 minutes just to let the other people in your network who know who they are so well yes yeah, it's, cool it's, like it. it's like anything else it's like prospecting your, your connections are your warm market anyway so they'll, they'll be only too pleased to, to to go live and Bear in mind that they've got a really valuable asset because the replays are automatic. Um, uh, I offer to do an edited cut down version with the Whirly Gig. That, that, that's my promotion. So I put the Whirly Gig on with their, their logo. So I offer that. Um, but if they're technically minded, they can download, well, they can't download, they, they, they can make a copy of that video, cut it up. And they've got like 30 second adverts for their business. So they, they, they're getting more than just going live as well. You know, because video it'll be out there forever, and they, they can keep re. You know, um, it's called repurpose. Yeah. They can repurpose it. Yeah, there's there's a lot in the live show, and this is one of the things I've learned during a live show. Most people don't watch the whole live. No, but there's often really good clips of information within the live, and if you can cut those out and reshare them, it, it's helpful for your audience and for the people who are. Yeah. Yes, because it just it provides a little it provides more detail on a specific topic, a small part of the live. Yeah. What what I do to publicize the, the replay is um when the live is finished, I go into LinkedIn and I re I redraft, I re I edit the post to make it I was live. But but I put at the top is uh, this is the and I always hashtag replay is quite popular so I put this is hashtag replay then I then I, I redraft the um, the live post and then I go back into the into the the publicity um, post and then I edit that it's very simple edit I just on top of it you know catch the hashtag replay here then I put the link to the what was the live 
um post and then i put in the comments i put catch the replay here hashtag replay here in the comments so i republicize the, the, the replay in the publicity post which has generally got quite a lot, lot of engagement so there's an audience there so that's another good tip to that, remarket the the, um, the replay that that is a good tip. i i honestly have not done a very good job of promoting replays of my lives and so that's one of the things i'm going to work on in the coming weeks is how do you yeah, well, how do I get more people to see those replays you just something I, I thought I'd try, I'd try to do because LinkedIn don't make it easy. If this is Facebook and we, we did a live, you can run what is called, what do they call them? Watch party. Watch party, yeah. Yeah, which is a non a live replay. You know, so LinkedIn don't make it easy. You've got to do it the hard way, the old fashioned way. So that's another way of, of publicizing the um, the replay to keep it going as well. And, and what you do was, which was very good as well, was. Um, you did a, like a twenty-second snippet of of a of an interview um, to publicize that one, and again, you can put the link in in the comments, couldn't you? So uh, yeah, this is yeah. Kind of thing. So it's to get see the idea behind it if, if watching is to get people's interest. So um, and as Ryan said, no one's going to watch watch unless unless you're you're a, a celebrity. No one's going to watch it all the way through. Um, however, if like Ryan, Ryan, Ryan does, and I, I've started to do. You do a thirty-second snippet. It's a hook because if you get, a, you get, there'll always be something in in an interview that's that's a really good hook that sums up the person's um, passion for what they do. So, what you do, you 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 upload a thirty-second hook of of a live, and then say, I mean, if you want to watch more, click on this link. Yeah, so you do it on YouTube as well, can't you? Yeah, and so those are those are some things for people creating a live show. Uh, you, if, if you promote it right, you can get people to come watch your live show as a replay. As a replay, and yeah. If you plan to do for that, uh, that kind of leads into. I, I just asked about some mistakes, so I thought let's get into the opposite side of that. So for the audience question here, for people watching, what's your favorite part of live shows? Do you like the ability to ask questions? Do you like uh, seeing the personalities of the guests. I don't know. What is it you like about live shows? But my question for you, Howard, oh. actually, maybe, you know what? I'm going to let you answer that question because I think that's an interesting question. So what's you your favorite part of live shows? All of it. I love all of it. Cause I love, like I say, we, we, you know, I don't go, I don't go live cold. I, I, I get to know the per most, Sometimes I know them already, to, 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 to be fair. Or if I don't, I get to know them about half an hour before. Um, I I like the whole thing, and I, and I I love it when they really when they really do a good job for themselves. You know, they they they've really given good stuff out without without being too salesy. I hate it. People don't like being sold to, and I try and draw out their I try and draw out their their emotion behind it rather than giving dry facts and figures to be honest no one really cares no, no one actually really cares but it's a, i like it when something happens to get their emotion out i love that i love that whole thing it's great yeah well here was here was my here was my real question on this yeah. thing. uh what do you think makes for a good live show oh it's easy you, ha you, you must wear an orange shirt and that, that's it and orange of. shirt next, and that's next question <laughs> Man, I, um, I got man. the wrong color shirt. On. I think I think what makes a good um, show um, it's obviously the person you're talking to, and I think we're going to play our own trumpets because I, I, I'm going to compliment you, which is which has been said of me that we put people at ease. You know, we'll have a chat beforehand. We get, uh, I mean, we know each other, I know, but if if somebody you don't know, so you, you know, you've got a sort of bit of bonding time, and I, I've I've been told that the feedback I get that they, they really enjoy talking about what they're talking about and um, they felt at ease. And that's what, that's what you do, which is a good, basically in a, in a long winded way, you can edit this later, um, a good engaging host. Well, that's well thanks. Yeah. It's uh, last week I had, I had a guy named Derek on the show and he mentioned a little bit about kind of what you're talking about of you need to know the person you're talking to. And he said a lot of times when he does a live, 
He said, it takes me 25 minutes before I really start to feel comfortable with the other person. And he said, that's when the conversation really gets good. And so maybe it's your, your strategy of scheduling a half an hour before you go live to talk to the person is maybe a good one. Cause then by the time you go live, you're comfortable with their personality and what they're doing. So yeah. yeah, that's, that's a good one there. All right. What, what else do we got? Uh, see, I, I don't have, I'll leave this audience question up, but <laughs> here's a question that I threw out last week to one of my guests and I kind of loved it. And I, I saved some time this time. What is the one question that you wish I would have asked you about? That is a bloody good question. That's a great question. That is a great question. Um, what, pro professionally or so? Oh, blimey. You got me there. Uh, what is the one question you should ask me? <laughs> um. I don't know, but I make sure I answer it though. <laughs> I make sure I give the answer to the question that you didn't ask me. <laughs> That's a politician's answer, isn't it? So uh, yeah, I don't know. Probably, actually, joking aside, probably I would. If I just say you wanted to ask me about a particular product, like the the video business card, I would make sure I would get that in, even though you didn't ask me the question. Well, that, the question. that's what I want to know. So tell me more. I, here's why I've started I to ask this question because it, as a host, like I have some things I want to talk about and learn about, but I think one of the things that I really find important is I want to figure out what gets you excited and let you talk about that. So tell me yeah. what, uh, tell me about these video cards, video business, business cards. cards. I, why I, 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 I uh, let me premise that with, with I, I, you before lockdown do do uh, couch interviews, which is a minimum of, of four fairly long interviews with business owners. The first one is an introduction. The second one is about a particular issue in their industry. But the beauty about the video business card is not necessarily about what they do; is is why they do it and how they do it, and it's it's to get their their passion out. And it's preserved, you know, and why I love video is it's it's the closest thing to you got your video, it's a video business card or, or a long or a longer interview. That's playing on, on your on your website or social media while you're out playing golf or out on another business meeting. It's there for you and and you're always going to be seen in the best possible light, uh, where you can show this two minute video a glimpse into your world, what, what makes you tick and, and how, how you do things uh, that you can show over and over and over and over again. And you're always looking at your best rather than being on the phone and say, well, no, you say to me, well, I'm probably, well, this is it. I'm probably spelling very badly what I, what I do, but if I have my two minute video, I'll just play it and, 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 and I'm away, you see. So that's, that's why I love it. And, uh, I like people. I like getting to know people. I like to like to, to see what makes them tick. You know, rather, you know, I I I I manufacture twenty widgets a week, uh, and each widget is you know thirty five millimeters in length and in circle, and all my clients. You know, nobody cares. Nobody cares. I want to know why you love widgets. That's more important. Yeah, I, I've never heard of the video business card, but I think that's a brilliant idea. I, I want to say, you know, I? <laughs> Go on. video, video is just, it's, it's so much easier to distribute than it was 10, 15 years ago. And so things like a video business card makes total sense. Plus it gives you, video gives you much more information about a person than just a picture or just a regular business card. Yeah. You get to understand a little bit of their personality, a little bit of their why. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. we had a couple of uh, – Derek, this is who I interviewed last week. Leslie said thanks for the call out. And he, he likes the pre-call warm-up strategy. And so there you go. Somebody else okay. maybe okay. going to pick up on that tip there to, uh, <laughs> to get that started. Yeah, one of the things, one of the things Derek did instead of – he didn't do it right before, but he, we actually had a phone call 
to to get to know each other a little bit before that. So he he does something similar. I'm thinking to what you did, but doesn't do it right before the show. Uh, he, so the the uh, one of my last questions here on here is uh, what what tips do you have for someone who is considering hosting a live show or starting a show similar to this one, similar to your couch conversations? What are a couple of tips you'd have? Practice. I'm not saying I'm brilliant in front of the camera, but you know, I'm, I'm not a media trainer. I think, you know, you've got to, I've, I've been told I need to smile a lot more. So that, that's been good feedback. Um, I think, I, I pick it. Mine's quite general because I, I I I like getting stuff out from business owners. But if 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 you're um, a dentist or a carpenter or or an accountant, you know you 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 can go live speaking to your peers about your your particular topic. So choose a topic that you're interested in, that 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 you're you're passionate in, because then you can get people together in your industry to talk about what's what's going. If you want to go down that route what's what's going on in in your industry um i think we cover most points i think you've got to be engaging you, you've got to keep you've got to make your guests feel, feel special feel at home um and just just being yourself you've got to tell them that it doesn't hurt being videoed <laughs> um and just 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 have a good time but you have to plan it you know the the the, the, the posting getting to to find your your guests and making sure everything is all everything is all uh, set up because um, like everything else, you, you, you've got to weigh out the person's personality. Some, some are very outgoing, some are not. So you've got to change your style to draw because it hasn't happened yet, but some people just give one word answers. So then there's an awkward gap and I've got to ask another question. So, and ask open questions, who, what, how open questions. Then, then you get a proper answer. Right. Uh, that that, so, last one, that last one is, is good. I, I typically talk to show hosts who are kind of comfortable with the on-screen thing. So being scared to go on camera isn't one that I usually have to come over. And usually I, I haven't had to deal with the one-word answer type of people either. But there are people like that in the world. And I don't, as a show host, that would be a good one. Yeah, but that's why um, to ask um, open questions and then you won't get a one word answer. Yeah. I, did you have any more tips? I kind of cut into your last one. Or no. <laughs> There's your one word answer. <laughs> no. All right. Well, Derek, Derek's got a question here. How do you focus on getting better? So, I mean, everybody, maybe not everybody, but if you're hosting a show, one of your goals should be to do better every week. Are there specific things you work on every week or how do you focus on getting better? Um, treat it, don't uh, treat it seriously, but don't take myself seriously. So prevent um, uh, a professional, um, what's one thing, an image. Like I do a proper, I don't uh, joke around. I joke around, but I, when, I, when, I do, when I do the introductions, I say it's now this is the couch interview shows where I interview business leaders, business owners about what you do, why you'll do it. I always make an invitation to come on. So I've learned to 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 promote myself and and to promote the shows now as well. That that's one thing I've learned, and and to smile more as well. I've been told to smile more. Smile so, more. Smile more. It, people people like it when the rest of the world smiles. Yeah, uh, one, of, one, of the, one of the tips I've I've done is after my shows, and you'll you'll probably get this after the shows and after I'm done going live, the guest and myself we stop going live, but we're still like what people see on screen. It kind of looks like this, and we go back into a broadcast studio. I always like to ask them as a show host, "What can I do to make the show better for you?" So that that's one of the things I do. And so Howard, you'll get that. Oh, that is a very good tip. So I always we always have a what I call um, um a debrief that's to see how I always I always ask how they felt about it. But that's a good question to ask. I, I'll I'll ask that. What can I do to 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 improve? Yeah. yeah, and I mean I've gotten tips from people such as uh, some people like it when I send questions ahead of time. 
Some people don't. So I sent questions ahead of time for a number of guests, and I've tried the last few without sending the questions ahead of time. I, I don't know. I, let me ask you, as a person who does a show, and while you're being interviewed, would you have found it helpful if I'd have sent you these questions yesterday? Um, no. Because I like talking about myself, so, you know. Yeah, and I, that's, that's part of what – that. I think more often than not, people don't really care to get the questions, but I think some people, there's a small percentage of people that do. I, I see, I love that. see, sometimes I, ask, I do ask what I call a killer, a killer question, which is like slightly off theme, like your one about what question would you like me to ask you? I thought that caught me off guard and I like that. It got me thinking because it makes it real. So I like me personally, I like, I like those sort of um, left, left fielded questions. That that's my new favorite question. I'm going to ask it to everybody. There you go. Talk Good. To from now Good. on, so if people yeah. watch my show, maybe maybe they'll get they'll be prepared for that. But yes, it it is that question that it, it's a big question, and there's a ton of things you can come up with for an answer. And I don't even clear. I don't specify whether I want it to be about our show topic or anything. So if you would have said, I really like cooking meatballs. Yeah, we could, we could have talked about that, but <laughs> no, it, it, it is a, it's actually a very good question because you and I are a bit more extroverted. We, 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 like I said, I'll answer that question even though you don't answer it. Somebody there could be sitting there thinking, Oh my god, I want, I've, I've got a new, um, a new pen coming out. Oh, I, I want to really want to talk, talk about this pen, and they're fully introverted because they, they, they don't want to start talking about the pen. So, by asking that question, they can say, Well, I've got a new pen coming out. So, it's a good question to ask. I like yeah. it. I, I, it's a fun one, and I think it also it gets you to what the guest really wants to talk about. But yeah, uh, we're we're wrapping up the end of our time. So brilliant, Howard. How do people find you, and how do they get in touch with you? Well, that's my website. It needs updating. Best thing is it's on LinkedIn. Just type in Howard Vale. Um, send me contact. PME or on Facebook under, under the same name. Um, or you can give me, a, yeah, just I think LinkedIn's the best way to to connect, really. So, you know, connect with me on LinkedIn and uh, I'll um, invite you to come onto my show, as I always do. We'll have, we'll have a chat and, and a bit of a laugh, really. And the good thing is, there you go. Well, if you're out there and you'd like to be a guest on somebody's show, Howard would be happy to have you. Some, sometimes. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever done this, but I've sometimes had the thought of just putting a post out on LinkedIn and asking how many people would be interested in just dropping in a live for like five minutes and maybe lining up six, seven people and doing a 35 minute live where you just bring in new people every five minutes, just for some quick little snippets to get to know some people. I, I haven't done that yet, but I, it would be interesting. Have you, have you ever done a longer live where you brought in multiple guests at different times. Yes, because uh, um, I did one. Up, I brought in three. Um, it was uh, about the housing market in the UK starting up again. So I had a valuer, a mortgage, a mortgage advisor, and uh, you call them a real estate agent. So that, yeah. so that was good. So that was good. But of course, if you want to get interviewed, obviously, you know Ryan first, and then me. <laughs> Right. Okay. Yeah. So I guess if you want to be interviewed by me, send me a LinkedIn message. Yeah. If you want it done properly, go to Ryan. And if you want, you know, a car crash, come to me. All right. But anyhow, because it'd be a different audience. That's the beauty of social media. Yes. You know, different audiences. So there we are. Yeah. Because Howard, most of your audience is in the UK, and most of my audience is in the United States, and it's there you go. It's largely different, but our time zones are. Our time zones are different, but it, it's it, we started at eight in the morning in central United States, and I believe it's two in the afternoon. Ten to three now, so it must yeah. be ten to nine. Almost three in the afternoon. So our our time zones are different, but they still fall within a normal day for most yeah. people. If you if you try to set that up, and this is what I love about the internet, and this is it still blows my mind that we can have a conversation, and you are on the other side of the ocean. And this is real time and almost anyone on the on the globe 
could listen to tune in if they wanted. It's amazing. I know. I know. So um, that's it. So I'm, I'm actually, I actually shared this live while you were talking. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Fan, fantastic here. Anyhow, thanks a lot, Howard, for being on the show. And everybody who's listening, I hope you have a great weekend. And we'll be back again next Friday. I'm, I'm unsure. I have a few people lined up for the guest, although I haven't scheduled it because I may be traveling, so I might not end up doing one next Friday. So I guess uh, stay tuned for that. But thanks, Howard, for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you and, uh, happy 4th of July to everybody over there. Enjoy. Yeah, bye-bye.